welcome everyone to the Moiski News for September the 29th, 2021. Today I'd like to discuss how Labour have had a bit of a, well, bum two weeks. They've been a tad difficult due to a number of errors that have made Labour look like a cliché that, well, lacks any genuine direction. And with the leadership out of sync, and then when tested, looks incompetent and incapable of potentially convincing the voters to allow them to rule the nation. The very first of these faux pas, errors, klutzy moments, clumsy issues, whatever you want to call them, comes courtesy of a 14,000 word pamphlet that was being handed out to Labour Party members setting out the vision that Keir Starmer has for the Labour Party. Within it though, many have pointed out that it is nothing more than a generic load of cliches that will have undoubtedly caused more issues with voters who will now believe him to be nothing more than a weirdo. One of the cliches being that he sees Labour becoming the bricks and mortar of Britain. He also is trying to push for a change. A change to the Labour voting system within the party rules for how a leader is decided upon. So what Keir wanted to do was return to the old arrangements where trade unions, MPs and party members each get a third of the voting power, with many pointing out that had that been a case back in 2015, Jeremy Corbyn never would have been elected. Within the pamphlet as well was the idea that Labour perhaps needs to move away from what's considered the more radical left political leaning, to lean more towards centre-left, so as to engage better with the voters they lost in 2019, many of whom were frustrated because of Brexit, if anything but you wouldn't have noticed it underneath all the cliché trash. That was no better than reading a 35-page essay from a toddler. That 35-page essay, by the way, which sets out the vision, which is also called The Pamphlet, was actually published on the Fabian Society, with a bid being seen as to reset the leadership and craft an ambition, right, for what Labour would look like in a government ahead of his first in-person appearance at a party conference as leader. Coronavirus kind of nixed this last year, so we haven't really seen or gauged a response from the members with him at the front. He's not down with the kids like Jeremy though, so there's always going to be that issue. And just to read a quote from that pamphlet, people are no longer prepared to sit back while politicians shrug their shoulders. The future will belong to those who do not just mitigate against change, but grasp the opportunities it provides. I want Labour to once again be Britain's bricks and mortar, a symbol of solidity, reliability, shelter and the prospect of building something new and better, unless it's built by a UK council, in which case it's trash. To do that, our party must have a relentless focus on the challenges and opportunities of the future, and how they can be shaped to the interest of working people. This all sounds remarkably nebulous, don't you think? Interestingly, I mentioned the issue when it came to leadership rule changes and voting for it. Well, it wasn't long after that Keir Starmer had to do a Tory by U-turning. Congratulations for showing some of that conviction. Perhaps solidity like bricks and mortar, so to move on, we're going to go to Angela Rayner, who is the Deputy Prime Minister for Labour. Now, she was not chosen by Keir. We know this because they fight a lot. Whenever he can't do PMQs, which is normally whenever Boris doesn't do PMQs, she steps up. If anyone watched last week's PMQs, it felt like watching somebody who was clearly handicapped talk. It was tragic. It was embarrassing. And quite frankly, I had to stop after question three because I was done with the condescending manner of speaking so slow so as to not sound like even more of a chav than usual. But this picture does you no favours. Now, Angela Rayner has come under fire recently. First of all, many believe she is vying for Keir Starmer's job. She's lucky to still have a job because in May when he did a reshuffle, he wanted to get rid of her. But because of the way the party runs, he can't. The deputy is chosen by everyone else, not by him. At the Labour Party conference, and this caused enough of a stir that many are asking for an apology, she called Tories a bunch of scum, along with being homophobic, racist and misogynistic. Basically, 
she used the party conference to do the very thing she can't do in Parliament. You cannot call anyone in Parliament scum, racist, homophobic, and misogynist. And by the way, when some people point it out, you do realise X percentage of your own constituency are conservative. She had to quickly shift the goalpost and say, I meant the MP, swag. Because it makes a blind bit of difference when you're using generic language on a large platform to rally the troops, comrade. People have questioned Keir Starmer over whether or not he has asked her to apologise, but he has actually avoided the question like he has avoided any questions when it comes to solutions to problems. Remember, he's just paid opposition. Solving the problem isn't his job. Poking holes at the problem is his job, which is why he never looks like a good leader, because in truth you will never hear a good solution come out of his mouth that isn't just, Tories are bad. With the Labour Party conference, it was also noticed and noted that Jewish delegates at the party conference were warned that they could face heckling. Why? Because members were voting on a new disciplinary system to judge anti-Semitism allegations. Three years ago, Labour MP Luciana Berger had to have police protection because of what was going on. This is how bad it was. To the point where this was trending on Twitter in certain aspects. The Jewish Labour movement did acknowledge the vote. Very interesting. But EHRC, the Equality Human Rights Commission, were trending. And the reason why was because this vote, by implementing those rule changes, was what many consider to be a door being closed on a shameful chapter in the Labour Party's history. I don't think that's the case at all. I think it only started to be closed when you guys paid millions in settlements to those that had suffered at the hands of those for the last five to six years who had done nothing but show a tremendous level of intolerance, which took a new leader to address because apparently the bungler for five years prior had no bloody idea how to do it. As early as Monday, people were starting to posit whether or not Keir Starmer has kept his pledges when it came to what he said he would do as leader of the opposition. And when one looks at what he's done with what he said he would do, I'll be honest, it's almost 50-50. It could be argued in 18 months, he couldn't accomplish too much. And what with all the infighting, he's going to be hampered a little. He himself conceding that coronavirus has certainly not helped his profile proven when he attended some questions with members of the Labour Party and former voters of Labour, many of them didn't know who he was. More vocal critics of Keir Starmer would include the former Chancellor or Shadow Chancellor John McDonnell, who believes that Labour is losing members hand over fist, and that disciplinary action against some members of the left of the party have made others feel unwelcome or perhaps intimidated. Those investigations were conducted because of anti-Semitism. If they don't feel welcome and are intimidated, maybe they shouldn't have been so anti-Semitic in the first place. John. Sorry. Comrade. Would you like a copy of Mao's Red Book back yet? The last thing that's happened since all of this conference nonsense going on is that Andy McDonald has quit in protest at Keir Starmer. Andy McDonald was on the Shadow Cabinet. He survived under Corbyn's front bench to Keir's and stayed as a Shadow Secretary for Employment Rights and Protections. So he's been creating currently, or was, Labour's new programme of employment rights, which were unveiled at the conference by Angela Rayner, which you wouldn't have known about because all anyone was talking about was when she called Tories scum, homophobic, racist and misogynistic. I know, I know, all the biz 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 words. McDonald has quit, though, because while he wants to fight for working people in the country, he believes there is a lack of support from his leader over bringing in a £15 an hour minimum wage, emulating the US but with a pound sign instead, which there are arguments for and against and I won't be drawn in on. Keir Starmer by himself is refusing to talk about this, in favour of my focus is to win the next election, which won't be till 2024, but you get them priorities right. Now, as we're done with all of this, I'd love like to know what you think. Is Keir doing a good job or not? Please do let me know in the comments down below, and if you did enjoy the video, please smash the like and share it. It does help this channel, and I'm going to try and grow it. That sounds weird. Anyway, thank you all for listening, everyone. 
Have a lovely day.